Hello. We've just celebrated the first Vespers, um, commemorating St Timothy. Now, St Timothy is uh, a figure, a bit like some of the uh, apostles, where we don't know a great deal about him. Um, certainly what we get from the biblical record is that he is from Lystra, that his mother is Jewish, his father is uh, pagan. And then we re read that he accompanies St Paul um, on his second missionary journey. And then on to, well, who knows where. What we do know is we have some, a couple of letters by St Paul to St Timothy. And these are important because they tell us that St Paul has obviously entrusted some authority to him. Quite what happens after the biblical record, well, that's where the doubt comes in. Uh, if we follow some of the later historians, such as Eusebius, then we perhaps uh, find uh, St. Timothy in Ephesus, where he is said to become the first bishop. Um, that might put us a bit in odds of uh, where St. John's got to at that point, because St. John was supposed to have gone to Ephesus with um, the Blessed Virgin Mary. So, well, as I say, that's where history is vague and we don't know precisely what happens. But what we do know is that St. Timothy was well regarded, that he was given some Episcopal authority and that um, he was clearly very, very dear to St. Paul. We look at the letters of St Paul to St Timothy, and what do we see? Essentially we see um, not only just personal encouragement to St Timothy, but also um, instructions and advice on how to keep the church in order, which is why you have um, uh, passages about ordination of, um, of bishops or priests uh, and deacons. There are instructions about how to treat the um, the laity, and how to how to recognise whether whether they're they're being treated well or not. So it's quite clear that St Paul intends the church to be kept in good order, and we've seen that already in the Acts of the Apostles, haven't we? Where um, everything is done properly, the disciples. The apostles uh, are, are quick to, to take counsel, to, 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 look at, you know, to look at matters. They have deacons to uh, go out and encourage the church. They, they organise uh, collections for the poor and the fa uh, those affected by famine. And all through the church we see order. We don't see people doing their own thing. Indeed, uh, for example, we see people doing their own thing uh, in Ananias and Sapphira uh, who come to, to bad ends because they, in their case, they are not giving of themselves honestly. They want to do things their way and are dishonest about it. Now, we can, can, we can contrast that with today's society and today's church. Uh, there was um, some talk about 30 years ago of the idea that there were multiple Christianities and that orth Orthodox Christian belief was just one among uh, several valid Christianities. Well, that thesis was... Uh, com well, was refuted because basically the, the author of that thesis had looked at different uh, different cities and had looked at peculiarities but not looked at the, the faith that comes come through those particular um, places. And we can see certainly from the letters of St Paul that, uh, that he, the way he writes to 
all, you know, churches all over the place, in places in Galatia, Ephesus, uh, Corinth, uh, Colossae, uh, and all these places. He's intending that there is just one Christianity because there is one Lord Jesus Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, um, one God. And you can hear you can hear that in the the letter to Corinthians, where he's saying, you know, that you, look, is Christ divided? There is one orthodoxy. There is one Christianity. There's not um, one among many valid interpretations. And that's where we do have to be careful, because personal choice, certainly in the early church, well, the Greek for personal choice comes the word we understand today as heretic, which is not a polite word uh, in today's society, particularly in, a, in today's church society. What we see in the early church is very much an attempt to keep hold of the faith that was once delivered to the saints. This is why there are always councils that come together and the great ecumenical councils are there for the purpose of putting, of fixing problems and clarifying issues in doctrine as well as in keeping order. This should make sense to us because... The Old Testament, we look at the, 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 the chosen people of God in the Old Testament, they're given instructions, they're, 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 their lives are ordered according to the Torah. The Torah is not uh, done away with at the incarnation of our Lord. He says that not a, a jot or a tittle will be taken away from the law. It is fulfilled in him, and it is the spirit of that law of the Torah that we bring through into to Christianity, which means we have to look at all the laws of the Torah and say, well, what's the spirit behind that? What are we to do? So, for example, we can look at the, the idea of the clean and unclean uh, food. We see Peter being uh, told to invite the Gentiles into the church. Um, on the strength of uh, con contrasting clean and unclean. So how do we understand that? Well, clearly the, the issue of the Christians that day were that the food must not be um, offered to idols. And we can think about how we can apply that today. What are the idols to which we sacrifice food? Our pleasure centres of the brain, perhaps? Our need to be, uh, our need to be, uh, have exactly what we want. Um, C.S. Lewis talks about gluttony, and one of the images he has is of a of a little lady who must have the right type of toast and the right type of tea and the right amount of butter on the toast and the right amount of milk in the tea, etc., etc. You can see how personal choice is coming into it. Now, we do have personal choice. We can live our lives the way we want to. But what we can't do is expect the church to bless the way we want to live our lives. We can't expect the church to condone everything that we do. Because some of the things that we do are out-and-out out sinful. And we need to know that. We can only know that we are being sinful if there is an ordered principle in the church, if there is a law, if there is a way of of telling. Now, the church isn't about denouncing sinners. It's about helping people to find their way to God, to acquiring the virtues, to gaining the mind of Christ, to seeing where God is to gaining the spirit of the law. Not as an oppressive thing, but as, uh, as a way of needing to know where we need God's grace in our lives. That's so important. The moment we start saying, oh, there are lots of different Christianities, um, which are equally valid, 
The moment we start saying that, then we've lost that connection with Christ, because Christ has only got one mind. Well, one human mind, one divine mind, but they are in harmony. So that is why we have to be very careful about what we, what we encounter, where people baptise their own decisions and their choice and their freedom of choice. Our call is very simple. As Christians, we recognise Christ as King, we obey his commands, we are humble and we realise that we cannot always understand the commands that he gives but we can be sure that if we listen to the church and we listen to the, the what has always been taught by the church then we will be hearing what Christ has in store for us and that takes some doing it means that we have to be faithful it means we have to be prayerful it means we have to be studious but we but we can with God's grace, we can do it. We can hear God. We ha can hear God. We can come near to Christ, because that is what He promises. So God bless you. God bless you. If you are struggling to come to terms with the ordering of the church, God bless you that you may be, you may see the light of Christ to guide you and draw you ever closer to Him. God bless you. If um, you are perplexed by the confusion caused by so many voices. God bless you that you may hear the church and hear God's voice in the church. And God bless you that you may join the ordered ranks along with St. Timothy and St. Paul and all the other saints in glorifying our Lord Jesus Christ for eternity. God bless you and please pray for me.